Speaker. I call Brett Hudson. Speaker, I rise as uh, it appears to be across the House in support of this, the Telecommunications Property Access and Other Matters Amendment Bill in its second reading. And I'd just like to begin by acknowledging and commending Mr Cunliffe for his comments about the work that was done on the committee uh, by individual contributors and the committee as a whole on the provisions around helping to extend fibre uh, to our rural areas. Uh, I'd note that the, the committee worked, in fact, it was an absolute joy to work in this committee on this particular bill for these very provisions and reasons. Uh, and Mr Cunliffe himself, I will note, worked very hard to ensure that we maintained consensus across all of the parties and individuals on the committee and that work of uh, his contribution and the other members has absolutely made this uh, bill, I think, that we can all be quite proud of as members uh, of a committee and also as members of this parliament. Uh, before I move uh, to talk a little bit more about the rural connectivity side, I just note, as other members have said, at the heart of the bill as it was introduced uh, to the committee was about making it easier for people in multi-unit dwellings and who share uh, common infrastructure and facilities with other people, making it easier for them to connect uh, to our faster broadband. Uh, if we look at some of the problems that have been uh, articulated uh, in the, the current consenting process, it's understood or estimated that approximately 71,000 households may currently be prevented from connecting to ultra-fast broadband due to consenting requirements the processes and potential objections under the, uh, the current provisions. In fact, in December 2016, there were 800 orders sitting waiting for connection where consenting had been running for 50 or more days. And Mr Speaker, all that is doing is preventing people from uh, making use of the services that faster broadband can provide both to help them, whether it is uh, in their own lifestyles and study, or in some cases uh, for businesses to use in support of conducting their business uh, more effectively and more efficiently. So the, the heart of those measures will help those people to connect much faster and will ensure that more and more people can take advantage of our high-speed broadband. But in the area of the rural broadband, uh, in the area of rural connectivity, and particularly extending fibre to the rural areas, I have to say I'd like to commend North Power for their, their wonderful submission. In some respects it could have been uh, termed as non-compliant, but it introduced an idea that they were willing to use infrastructure they already had to help New Zealand and New Zealanders in rural areas to get even better internet connectivity. I commend the then Minister of Communications for uh, agreeing to allow the committee to consider that as an amendment to the bill as it stood. And in fact, so the committee was afforded an opportunity to undertake policy work during our uh, consideration of the bill. Uh, it was an extremely uh, good process to be a part of. It was robust. The conversations in the committee were, were uh, clearly articulated by members coming from different perspectives. And ultimately, we reached a point where we are all very comfortable that what we're doing will give the opportunity for more New Zealanders across the country, particularly in rural areas, to connect to broadband. And it does so while protecting individual property rights and also protecting the uh, business interests of uh, those electricity companies who may offer their existing infrastructure as uh, facilities for uh, fibre to be strung across. So, Mr Speaker, this is a wonderful process to have been part of. I commend the committee for the work it did and I commend this bill to the House.